The global cyber attack where hackers demanded money and exploited a dangerous security hole which froze 100,000 companies in 150 countries. A major cyber attack forcing hospitals across the UK to turn away patients. The British National Health Service saying computer systems were impacted. It's an international attack and a number of countries and organizations have been affected. While victims receive ransom demands, paying those demands did not unlock their computers. Cybersecurity experts are warning that the rogue regime could be behind that global cyber attack. Well, I decided to jump into kind of looking into it. So I asked a friend if I could have a sample of the WannaCry worm. I just felt like I would have preferred that the whole WannaCry thing never happened. In 2017, the Spanish telecommunications giant Telefonica announced that the company's computers had been infected with a malicious software known as ransomware. This type of malware locks up computers and demands ransoms for decryption. But this was only the beginning. And not long after, other prominent organizations around the world also started reporting the issue. The virus started traveling from continent to continent till it reached 150 countries around the globe crippling more than 250,000 computers and causing an estimated $4 billion in financial losses. However, the most devastating harm was felt across 36 National Health Service hospitals scattered across Scotland and England. 19,000 appointments were canceled, leaving patients without planned surgeries and health tests, and ambulances were rerouted, leaving patients in critical condition behind. If it's x-rays or breakages or whatever, you, they're, they're gonna send you home. Things were so bad that people were advised to only seek medical attention in the event of an emergency. People all across the world fell victim to a similar fate, opening their computers to find a message that read, the files you have on the hard drive of Windows cannot be opened. This was accompanied by decryptor instructions in 28 languages on how to access the encrypted files. The cyber criminals informed users that the files could only be recovered if a payment was made in Bitcoin within three days after which the price would double. But if it wasn't paid within seven days, the prized files would be deleted forever. And that's where Marcus Hutchins, a 22-year-old cybersecurity researcher, also known as Malwaretech, comes into our story. While still living with his parents in a seaside town in Devon, England, Hutchins caught wind of the cyber attack on the National Health Service and decided to investigate the case. Hutchins asked his friend to send a sample of the virus, which would come to be known as WannaCry. And against all odds, the Englishman would stop the virus in his tracks in just one day. In one day? How the f is that even possible? Don't worry, we'll get back to Marcus Hutchins later, but first, let's talk about how this WannaCry mess started in the first place. The WannaCry virus did not appear by chance. This cyber attack has a very interesting origin story that takes us to the US, and specifically to the United States National Security Agency which is responsible for global surveillance and collection of information for intelligence and counterintelligence purposes. However, while the NSA is keeping order in the cybersphere, they're also collecting security vulnerabilities for their own use. In other words, they need to stockpile tools to stand against America's supposed enemies and as a countermeasure against cyber attacks and terrorism. And here comes the interesting part. It's believed that in 2011, the NSA were actually the ones who identified a vulnerability on computers running the Microsoft Windows operating system, and without telling a word to Microsoft, developed their own hack based on the vulnerability. This hack, known as Eternal Blue, allowed an external party to execute remote commands on their target. Due to the severity of the bug and practically limitless exploitation possibilities, the tool utilizing the bug would go on to become one of the top workhorses for hackers worldwide. It didn't take cyber criminals long to hijack the NSA's findings. A then unknown hackers group called the Shadow Brokers, who may have had connections with Russia, claimed in 2016 that they hacked some of the NSA's most secretive cyber weapons. These weapons were similar to Stuxnet malware, which was used to cripple Iran's nuclear program. They allegedly leaked the information from Equation Group, which, according to cybersecurity company Kaspersky, is one of the most advanced cyber attack groups operating under the NSA's wing. Looking at it now, this all seems very real and very huge, but back then, it seemed like it all might be a hoax. Shadow Brokers announced an auction in which the highest bidder could buy these tools in cryptocurrency, 
The group's goal was to collect 1 million bitcoins, which accounted for half a billion US dollars at the time. Interestingly, the auction did not attract interest in the cyber world because many people thought it was a scam. And after 24 hours, the sellers had received only a few bitcoins. It's now speculated that the reason behind asking for such a huge amount of money was that they had secretly expected the NSA to outbid every other potential buyer to keep their secrets hidden. After many attempts to convince the public of the legitimacy of their ownership of the hacked data, they first released a handful of tools to the public, and only later on released them all, Eternal Blue being part of the release. And that's the moment when the main culprits of the WannaCry virus first appeared in this story. After careful investigation, the United States is publicly attributing the massive WannaCry cyber attack to North Korea. Enter the well-known North Korean hacking group Lazarus, which is believed to be sponsored by the North Korean state to raise money through cyber theft to finance secret North Korean projects. This cybercrime group used the Eternal Blue tool to create the WannaCry virus and spread it around the world in 2017. This, according to Symantec researchers who found multiple instances of code that had been used in a previous Lazarus group activity. Fragments or snippets or pieces of the technology were definitely linked to a Lazarus group. Now that you got a little bit of perspective, let's get back to Marcus Hutchins. How did he manage to stop the WannaCry virus in just one day? Well, when the virus spread worldwide on May 12, 2017, Marcus Hutchins began analyzing the WannaCry virus. I checked some messages boards and seen all of this news about something targeting the NHS. Quickly, he noticed that the virus had made a web request, which was its mission, to an unregistered website. So he bought the domain for just $12 and registered the website. The worm couldn't travel any further. Its mission was completed. It reached the website it was searching for. In other words, it disabled the malware after finding its kill switch. That's it. That's all it took. Tech specialists now believe that the hackers installed this mechanism intentionally to allow them to stop the spread of the virus if at some point they found themselves in danger from it. And if it had all just stopped there, it would have been a happy ending to our story. The WannaCry virus is defeated, the cyber world is saved, but unfortunately the WannaCry hero Marcus Hutchins' reputation would soon be tarnished. Not long after stopping the WannaCry virus, Marcus Hutchins went to Vegas for the annual DEF CON Hacker Conference, which is actually more of a party for people like Hutchins. There, he enjoyed all the luxuries befitting the hero he was, driving a Lamborghini, staying at a 30-bedroom mansion for $2,800 a night, and swimming in the largest private pool in Vegas. But little did he know, the festivities were about to come to a screeching halt. After a week of partying, he went to the airport to catch a first-class flight back to London. And while he was waiting to take off, men in CBP uniforms approached and took him to a private room. Hutchins' mind raced. Why were the men interested in him? Was it all the marijuana he smoked in Vegas? In the interrogation room, agents flashed FBI badges, and he was handcuffed. After some small talk, the agents finally cut to the chase. They didn't want to talk about WannaCry or his heroism. They wanted to talk to him about a program called Kronos. And instantly, Marcus was demoted from hero to villain. Turns out, in his early life of coding, Marcus and a partner were working on a software called UPass Kit. Later, this version was updated and banking malware code was incorporated. Upgraded software called Kronos was sold at a darknet marketplace for $2,000 in digital currency. It was designed to steal banking login credentials from browser sessions via a combination of key logging and web injection. And this Kronos banking trojan had attacked British banks in 2015. The US Department of Justice accused Hutchins of having helped create, spread, and maintain Kronos. Marcus Hutchins denied the charges against him and he was released on bail, but he wasn't able to leave the US or work and had to be monitored by a GPS tracker. Then, just before the trial, he decided to take a plea deal in exchange for leniency. So the hearing today was to determine whether or not Marcus would be detained as a result of the charges and the indictment. And the judge agreed with me in saying that he is going to be released pending certain conditions that he has attached to the bond. Marcus Hutchins went from lavish pools to facing up to 10 years in prison. Nonetheless, the judge saw him as a contributor to keeping the world safe. So he sentenced Hutchins to time served with a year of supervised release and noted that the WannaCry virus Hutchins helped to stop was far more damaging than the Kronos. Despite all the release patches and information about WannaCry, it's still an active threat that hides in the ransomware landscape. There are still hundreds of millions of Microsoft users who did not patch their software. The self-replicating virus is virtually immortal. All it takes is a vulnerable computer and a cyber criminal who's keen to adapt the old version of WannaCry and re-release it to the wild, wild west of the cyber world. 
if they haven't already. What we cannot do is have a situation in which suddenly this becomes the wild, wild west. Maybe you were also a victim of the WannaCry virus? Can we consider Marcus Hutchins a hero? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any other interesting stories. Thanks, guys. See you next time.